Welcome to the second video of mine concerning which machines palindrome. Today it's about choosing samples. I talked a lot about modulating the parameter start and rate in my last video and today I turn to the question what samples shall I load into the four sample players. This question is a fundamental one. The samples are the raw material palindrome works its magic on and Choosing the wrong material gives every builder some hard times, as well as us poor sound designers aiming for the one and only glorious sonic product, but having chosen inadequate samples. Inadequate? Well, inadequate only for that certain sound we are aiming for. You can create amazing things from literally any sample with palindrome, but again, like last time, you enter the realm of chance then, leaving the path of a sound composer and allowing, uh, um, sorry, allowing your um, ludic drive to take over the game. That's okay, but you don't need to watch a tutorial, do you? <laughs> okay, okay. <clears throat> what we need is gaining knowledge about, as well as developing a feeling for a notion, which sonic potential is hidden in a sample what we can do, what we can use a certain sample for. I'm going to demonstrate how interesting a sound you can create, even from very simple and ordinary samples. What I need is only a bowl. I find one in my kitchen, hit it, record its primitive sound and load it into palindrome. Well, I load it even twice, in sampler 1 as well as in sampler 2. Please notice, Please notice the character of the sound. It starts quite loud with a couple of partials, or a few only, and uh, dies away, losing not only its volume, but also its partials, starting from the highest ones and going down the spectrum to the fundamental. Our bowl delivers a typical representative of a specific class of sounds of samples, plucked strings belong to this class too, just one example. What I'm really going to show in this video is a way to work with this whole class of sounds. Shall I rename the video eventually, like uh, mm, from bowel to super monster horror, or how to treat a certain class of sounds? Oh, well, no, rather not. All right, I should stop gabbling, get going. First of all, I should cut the end of the sample. There is a good deal of useless silence to cut off. But I won't cut off all of the silent part, but leave a maximal grain length after the sound has died away, nearly died away. In case of palindrome, it is one second or one thousand milliseconds. I'll be able to smoothly and consecutively move into the sample from behind that way. The whole sample is 2538 milliseconds long now. I modulate the start position using envelope 1 and make the grain move across the whole sample in original speed, but from behind. Please watch my last video about palindrome if you need to learn how to do that. You'll find the link in the description. I don't want the typical percussion effect at the beginning of the sample. I cut off the bit, a bit of silence at the beginning and the very first oscillations too. I have to reduce the length of the modulating envelope to the length of the remaining sample again, of course. The grain window is rectangular, which leads to the hit-like beats at the grain's beginning. I change it to Han, 
Again, please watch video number one about palindrome for details about the grain window types. And I let the grain be played in reverse and pitch it down to the lowest possible pitch. The tail of the sound is too long now with this constellation. I cut another piece off the sample and load this uh, cut number three in sampler one. We can nicely see that the relation of the length of the grain and the length of the whole sample has changed. The grain covers a remarkable part of the whole sample now. Short intermezzo. Some words about different kinds of speed may be helpful now before I continue designing the sound of the bowl. I tweaked two parameters some minutes ago. Two parameters which both concern speed. The envelope modulating the start parameter has a certain length. It's one second and one millisecond at the moment. This is the length of the sample after the last cut. Changing this length changes the time the grain needs to walk across the whole sample. It's the playback speed of the sample of the sampler without changing the pitch, because the grain itself, its content, is still played back at the same speed as before. Only the grain as a whole walks um, across the sample at a different speed. The time adjustment in the envelope section determines the length of a piece of music, a piece of sound, that is in the sampler, not the pitch. The adjustment of the pitch, on the other hand, influences only the content of the grain, only what is in the grain. The pitch parameter determines how fast this content in the grain is played back, without changing the speed at which the grain moves across the whole sample, meaning without changing the length, um, um, the duration of the piece of music or sound in the sampler. Well, Back to the process of designing the sound. I want to uncover more of the details which are hiding in the sample and slow down the speed of the grain, meaning making the envelope time longer. But the grain's length covers nearly half of the whole sample now. There is not much space for moving around. The magnification factor of our, well, let me say it, um, sonic microscope is quite low. Our sonic microscope has got a very weak objective lens. I reduce the length of the grain, therefore. But now, with such a short grain and such a low speed, it walks around in the sample with the sample tail is really too long again. I could cut it off, again cut it off, but I don't want and simply change the point where the grain starts moving by dragging down the first break point in the envelope. And I slow the movement down even more. I don't want these volume beats caused by the grain's window and smooth them out um, using delay. I get the best results with a quite short delay time and nearly maximum feet. Please notice that I'm not using the effect of delay to add structure to the sound, that's what effects are normally supposed to do, but on the contrary, I'm using the delay to smooth structure out, to make it vanish. 
But now I'm going to add some structure to the sound. I'll still use the delay, but in a quite special way. You will know what happens when you change the delay time while a sound is being processed, don't you? Well, let's make use of this effect and modulate the delay time using envelope number 2. Oh no, that's not scary, that's simply horrible. The modulation is too strong and it's always in the same direction. Well then, let me draw a better curve, changing the direction and the strength, and limit the amount of modulation. Much better. But I need a bit of tremble, like in a quivering voice. Well, no problem, I have to modulate the pitch. But again, I must limit the amount of modulation to make it ghostly. Okay, sufficient. Let me try how the four voice polyphony works with these adjustments. Not bad for a simple bowl from the kitchen so far. But it's time to make use of the next sampler, isn't it? Oh yes, there is still the very first long version loaded in sampler 2. I load the last cut, therefore. I leave the window type at rectangle because I want this sharp bell-like start and end of each sound this time. But I modulate the pitch, only this time I do it in steps to get the sound of different bells, not the gliding kind of modulation which I used with sampler 1. Let's listen to both samplers now. Oh, my God. 
Well, I will let the playhead move around. Please remember that samplers 3 and 4 are still empty. Hey, what a scary ghostly thing our little bowl has become now. I could try different speeds now, or better said, different relations of the four envelope speeds which are involved in the patch so far. And I could try different modulation curves. But I leave these experiments to you. I think you'll know by now what to do. And I leave it to you to fill sampler 3 and sampler 4. Just a tip. Ring modulation might come in handy here. Well, thank you for watching. Next time I'm going to talk about another class of sounds, another kind of samples. Enjoy your day, Rolf.